The New Hampshire Wildcats draw yet another third down on the Elon offense, and they're once again backed up in their own end. It's third and four from their own seven. McKay with his heels on the one yard line. Hampton to his left as they haven't shown much, much diversity offensively to this point. McKay just 0 of 2 passing. Hampton with six rushes. McKay with three. And they were looking for Bryson Daughtry out to the right. He didn't get his head turned around in time. That'll bring up another fourth down for Elon. Yeah, you said it, Ken. Looking was sort of the key word. They were looking for him, but he wasn't looking for the ball <laughs> in time. Daughtry expected to receive a lot more targets today with Jackson Paramount for the Phoenix. And McKay, after really his worst game of the season last week at URI, has continued his struggles. Just 0 for 3 passing today. Wildcats have now pitched five straight shutout quarters. McKay just really seems to not be on the same page with his wide receivers today. We saw him sail a pass over a receiver's head. And then there just wasn't on the same page with Bryson Daughtry, who didn't get his head turned around in time. You had 12 guys out here. Fourth down for Elon once again, Jeff Yerk. About nine yards deep in the end zone. Dylan Lobby with his heels on the Elon 45 yard line back to return. Lobby might get a chance at this one. He leads the nation in punt return average at 20.5 per return. And he will take this one, fields it at the 40, spins out of the first tackle, still on his feet somehow, and here comes the burst from Dylan Lobby. There goes Psycho, push down at the 15-yard line. Well, you can see why he leads the nation. Unbelievable. I mean, even if he hadn't gained any yards, that would have been incredible. Took those hits, broke those tackles, and then found some open space. Unbelievable return from Dylan Lobby. We'll take another look at it right here. Gets knocked backwards, five yards. He absorbed the first hit, spun out of it, and I thought he was certainly dead to rights when that herd came at him on the, on the second attempt. Well, like you said, just stayed cool, took a step back, and found his second legs. He'll get a little well-deserved rest right now. Isaac Seed in the backfield. Isaac took the majority of the snaps last week against Dartmouth, had a very good game, over 100 yards rushing. A bunch formation for the Wildcats to give to Seed. Wrapped up by Marcus Hillman, the tackling leader for Elon. Gain of about one. And Seed didn't have a great first half last week, but really found his rhythm. And you know, you always hear about how running backs need to find that rhythm. They get better with more carries. And as the game goes on, it's certainly true for Seed last week. And so you can see why it's been kind of tough for him this year, only getting three, four, five carries here and there per game. Hasn't been able to find that rhythm, but. Did it last week against Dartmouth in a nice fill-in spot for him. 40 carries on the season for Seed, 26 of them, and 127 yards came last week from Hanover. Timeout for the Wildcats. Second time, time out of the half. They have second New and Hampshire. nine from the Elon 14-yard line. They want to talk things over. Kind of watched Coach Santos walk down the sideline. He was staring in at the field and just didn't like what he saw. And it's almost a disappointed or a frustrated timeout that he called right there. This is an opportunity the Wildcats certainly don't want to squander. They came into the day, you know, they're leading the CAA in terms of standings, but there's still a few teams ranked ahead of them in the national polls. Elon came in at number 21 in the Stats Perform poll. New Hampshire number 25, William & Mary, Richmond, some of the other CAA teams ranked in this week's poll. And so I... I I don't want to say they were underdogs because obviously the Wildcats are at home. They're playing well, but this is probably the toughest opponent they've had FCS-wise all season. So this is an opportunity they certainly don't want to squander here with a gift at the 14-yard line. Yeah, no, no question about it. Huge spot for the Wildcats. Lipkowski in motion. Rosemar looking that way. Changes direction up the middle. Sean Coyne for the touchdown. Wow, great, first of all, great protection by the line. Gave Brosmer a clean pocket to throw from, and then he really threw Coyne open at the last second here with a great angle. You can see puts it only where Coyne can catch it. Coyne had a step. Brosmer led him perfectly. Great job going through his progressions there. We saw he was looking for Lepkowski, who was moving in motion as the first read and found Coyne, who ran himself wide open across the middle of the field. Nick Maisie back for the extra point. The Wildcats ahead, 13. Bro 
Rosemer on the hold. And it's up and it's through, and the Wildcats have built themselves a 14-point advantage here with 14 minutes to go in the second quarter. Wildcats had a 14-0 lead last week against Dartmouth as well. We'll see if they can carry this one home for another win. We'll come back to Durham. Look back at the last touchdown from Max Brosmer to Sean Coyne up the middle to build up a 14-point advantage for New Hampshire. Great grab by Coyne. Leaving his feet, grab me with both hands. One second touchdown on the season. One away from tying his mark a season ago with three. Here come the Elon Phoenix trying to get something going here. Fielded at the three-yard line. It's Bray Boy. Splits up the middle, has room to work. Yanks down at about the 40-yard line, but a flag down at the 21. But of course, the more important matter is Jem the Dungeon Dog out at the 35. Oh, she's relentless. She won't be deterred. The Dungeon Dog. Three for three on the day. Let's see what the flag is. A lot of untimely penalties on the Phoenix so far today. Holding during the return, receiving team, number 43. 10-yard penalty, first down. That'll back the Phoenix up 10 yards. It was Cody Hardy, the tight end, on the hold in coverage. So roughing the passer, penalty against Elon, cost him an interception earlier in the game. We mentioned this earlier, Elon, just, they, they came into the day with what looked to be a high-flying, dynamic offense, and that's... Not what they've showcased today. Michael McKay, or Matthew McKay, excuse me, just 0 for 3 passing. Hampton with six rushing attempts and McKay with three of his own, netting just 38 yards on the ground. No yards through the air. And the Wildcats have consistently backed them up in their own end, and that's what they've done again here starting at the 11. Hampton to his right. McKay gets the snap, gives it to him. Finds room up ahead, brought down by Toscano and Capongo. Close to a first down, about a yard shy. Again, Elon coming off their worst offensive game of the year, 17-10 loss at Rhode Island. We have seen the running game look okay in a, in a couple of moments for the Phoenix, but UNH defense doesn't really let them even close to scoring range. It is worth noting they're out their, their top wide out, Jackson Parham, is out today, leading the team with 34 receptions coming into the day. Four touchdowns also leading the way for the Phoenix. The give back to Hampton. Stumble ahead for about a yard, yard and a half. They'll give him the first down. Small steps you have to imagine for this Elon offense right now, just try to pick up a couple first downs, get their feet under them. They are big up front. They have talent at the skill positions. They've got a very talented quarterback in Matthew McKay. All the ingredients are there for this Elon offense. Elon, their last three drives have ended at their own 21, the UNH 45, and their own four-yard line. McKay with the keeper out to the left, a second burst, and Randall Harris can't wrap him up, and the Wildcats eventually chase him down at the 50-yard line. Max Oxendine on the tackle. Great block on the edge by Elon wide receiver Jordan Bonner. He's holding up Noah Stansberry, I think, out there. Like I said, the furthest Elon has gotten in this game is the UNH 45-yard line. They're at the 50 right now. McKay standing back to pass, takes a hit. Downfield finds a man, and he's going to run in for a touchdown. That's Bryson Daughtry for the score to cut the deficit in half. Well, that was an issue that we saw earlier in the year for UNH. There were a couple of Phoenix running wide open down the field. Some kind of busted coverage in the back end. Mac Eichmann had to take a pick on who to run for. I mean, I'm not going to be able to see it on this replay, but McKay had a couple of guys that were open down there. Eichmann had to leave the tight end and try to get Dotri. Too little, too late. Coach Santos was worried about this. He knew McKay would take his shots downfield. He has a strong arm. He's not afraid to throw it deep, not, not afraid to throw up 50-50 balls. There's nothing 50-50 about that one. Wide open receivers for the Phoenix, and 
Going to cut this UNH lead in half with the extra point. Skylar Davis back to kick for the Phoenix. Swing of the right leg. And it holds true. They cut the deficit in half, 14-7 to 7 with 12-13 to play here in the first half. 